Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. Hope you're all doing good this weekend. Uh, so, we cast some pumpkin seeds <laughs> on the last stream, and uh, we'll have to see how this goes. If you don't know, pumpkin seeds have a shell, or at least these ones do, have a shell around the seed. And there's a couple issues going on with these things. Obviously, you know, when we cut into these, you know, shell casings, we're probably gonna get some voids because resin can't really get in there for the most part. And I don't even think, I don't know, I don't really think that stabilizing would have really changed the, the, the kind of voids that are gonna happen. It's not like it's gonna fill it, I don't think. Um, and even if it did, um, cactus juice, you know, if you have like a big blob of it, it's really not like like resin, like casting resin. So I don't know that it would have been any help. Um, it might have stiffened up the seed itself um, a little bit. The shell is fine. You could cast these shells and, and, and that would be no problem at all, I don't think. Um, but uh, we'll have to see how this goes. Um, and, and actually thinking about it, you know, like, like um, sunflower seed shells or pumpkin seed shells, that might be kind of the way to go. Like if you can break them open and just have shells and no seeds, that might not be a way, bad way to go. But you know what? I drilled these out. I didn't have any problems drilling them really. They felt a little bit softer than I'm used to, let's say, um, on the inside. But um, what I did to kind of prepare these, I drilled, um, yeah, I drilled them out and then I doused the inside with CA glue. Then I kind of had to kind of clean up that hole a little bit, just kind of ran the drill bit by hand through it. And then, um, and then you know, glued the tubes in. So everything went pretty well. The um, barrel trimming went okay. I'm gonna show you guys a way to, you know, a few people have, have kind of noted on the stream that round blanks can be kind of difficult for, to, to hold um, when you're drilling. And, and also if you're using a barrel trimmer, it's the same issue. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. It's kind of an easy trick, but um, we'll do that kind of first. So who was in the stream in the chat first? Mike McEwen was here, nice. Sweet, and Kim, Douglas, Mark's here. Mark's playing with that laser still, that's awesome. Getting some good stuff done with that thing. And let's see here, who else? Who else, who else? Uh, Copper Owl and Paul. Nice. And Jennifer's here. Lorenzix, how's it going? And Colin. Nice. Ah, oh, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. That was that was nice of you right off the bat. That's pretty cool. All right, so first things first, like I said, I want to show you how I held these things and, and did the and I actually have one that I'm gonna barrel trim out. Um, one thing to note. You know, I, I make the blanks a little bit longer than the tubes. I, I cut them a little bit longer. So you, and you all pretty much always want to do this. In this case, I left them a little bit, like maybe like a, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch even longer than I normally do. Just in case, you know, you got seeds on the end here and just in case something kind of broke off or it was kind of weird when you drilled it. Um, so I left them a little bit long, but what I do before I barrel trim, and this is actually kind of one of the, the keys, I think, to barrel trimming, because barrel trimmers can be pretty aggressive, um, and a lot of people have had issues where it kind of blows out the blank. What I do is you want to minimize how much that barrel trimmer actually has to take off. I don't want more than like a 16th inch hanging off the end when I barrel trim it. So it's just, you just want that thing to square it up. You don't want it to be drilling through a bunch of material. Um, especially important if you have like a really, um, uh, you know, like fragile blank. I'm trying to think of a material that would be really, really terrible, that blows out a lot. <sighs> I mean, there's a lot of things that I do that, that you cast, but there, there's certain woods and things that, that just, I mean, you, if you barrel trim it, it's pretty much almost guaranteed to just blow out. So maybe you guys can kind of throw out some ideas. I just can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Um, but so I, what I do is I go to my, my disc sander and I don't rely on that thing being super accurate. I mean, I do make sure like the fence is kind of square, but I'm not going for dead on accu accuracy. Um, but I, I sand off a lot of that material. Then I barrel trim and it's just, you're just taking a little bit off and getting it perfectly square. Um, I personally think that the easiest way to get this thing dead square is to, to be referencing off that, you know, the barrel trimmer, um, uh, what do you call it, like reamer part. I mean, it's it's just dead square, like inherently. Even if you set up some kind of elaborate sanding jig thing, it's still, it's moving 
and it's easy for that blank to kind of deflect off. Like there's almost no way to get it just dead perfect, I don't think, personally. Um, I just think it's so much easier to just reference off the barrel trimmer. So, and they're quick, um, I, I like them. The problem with barrel trimmers is you have to keep them sharp and they're a pain to sharpen. So that's kind of the drawback. But black palm, that's a good one, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah, that stuff is like, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm interested to see how these turn too. I'm not, I, th I think they're gonna hold together. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. I think that there may be some kind of deeper kind of um, pits and things to fill um, once we get in there. And one of the big, <laughs> one of the worst parts is, you know, when you get down to the end of the, you know, of turning and you're getting it close to that bushing, if you have a bunch of seeds around there, <laughs> you might be filling a lot um, with, with CA. So I'm going to switch to the other camera, uh, not this camera. Well, just if you guys want to see the blanks, actually, I have the blanks too. What am I doing? If you didn't see the, the posts, sorry guys, I got like 50 things going on before I go out of town. <laughs> so here's the, the results of the blanks. Um, the one thing to note, whoops, um, you know, we cast these in the, the mold, the Gatling mold doesn't really matter which mold it is, but we cast them vertically. And one thing uh, which you can kind of maybe see on a couple of these, there's, you know, these blanks are only like five inches long. And, you know, my mold was six. So, you know, we, we filled it to the top, but then we pressurized it. And there was qu quite a bit of like air bubbles and stuff in there. And so the, the amount of resin that actually got in here dropped significantly once the the pressure pot collapses all those air bubbles that are in the blanks in the resin when you pour it um, and so that level dropped like an inch so keep that in mind if you're doing something like this where you're packing it with a bunch of stuff first and then um, dumping it in and it, and it was on both of them which we tried a couple different methods so if you got a lot of materials a lot of small stuff um, you're gonna get more kind of air bubbles while you're pouring it and that level, even if you top it off, is gonna drop. So, you know, you might wanna go, if you're just pouring in PVC pipes, if you want five inch blanks, you know, you might, in something like this, you might pour like a, you know, six and a half inch blank to make sure that you get your full five inches out of, you know, the blank. So I just wanted to kind of note that real quick. Uh, but if these work out and they're not like just absolutely horrible, then these guys are gonna go in the subscription boxes. But here's our blanks. And I have one other one that, that needs one, one edge um, barrel trimmed that we're gonna go do right now. Was it better to fill, better fill in the seeds? Um, you know, Gene, actually, I, I didn't, I mean, they're really, I don't know that there was really a big difference, <laughs> actually. Um, the one thing, and this was, we saw this when I was doing it, um, the one that I filled up with, you know, the first one where we filled the, the tubes with seeds and then just dumped the resin, you could actually physically see bubbles popping coming up to the top like the whole time. And that didn't really happen, but at the same time, like I said, those levels still kind of dropped quite a bit. So I, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other things that I'm not thinking of that might have also caused that level where there was kind of an expansion. I, one thing I don't know if the pressure really affected the seeds in any way, if that could have like squished them when they were under pressure and, and that resin, and so like the volume of the actual seeds themselves um, might have changed even. I don't know. I didn't really see a big difference though. Maybe slightly, maybe slightly where um, we got a little bit more resin in there, but it wasn't like night and day um, that I noticed. <clears throat> Yeah, I, the carbide barrel trimmers are extremely um, aggressive. Those things will just flat murder blanks. So you got to kind of watch out. I wish somebody would come out with uh, not a negative rake. Uh, maybe, maybe you could use the negative rake cutters, but those things are like really not aggressive, basically. Like they're, they're on the, the super low end of aggressiveness and they almost don't really cut as well. W what I wish somebody would come out with is a barrel trimmer where it's not like 90 degrees um let me let me go get the let me go get a barrel trimmer real quick show you what i'm talking about so what i wish somebody would come out with is carbide 
you know, inserts that you can mount there so you don't have to sit here and try and, it's really hard trying to sharpen that little wing. But the wing is like nine, it's like perpendicular. It's like straight up and down. I wish somebody would make a car, and the carbide ones are like this too. I wish they would make it where the wing itself, the thing that you mount it to, is like, oh, am I on camera? Let me, <laughs> sorry. I'm watching my, I'm, so this is perpendicular. I wish they would make it where this is ground slightly negative, and then the carbide inserts fit on there. I think that would be the absolute bee's knees. It would be perfect. It would be awesome. And, and like regular, the standard cutters that are a little bit more aggressive, um, that would be awesome. Um, but you do really have to kind of watch out on some of those carbide ones. They can be like really bad murder on, on blanks and just rip them apart. So just, just watch out, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't know about a Forstner bit. Yeah, that, I mean, that could work because those are kind of swept back. That might not be a bad way to do it, actually. I, I never tried that. But I, I, I think that it would be nice if somebody would just come out. I, I really need to talk to the guys at Easy Wood Tools. I've actually mentioned it before. Like, I'm like, hey, could you guys make a... <laughs> and they haven't done it yet, so I don't know. I don't know if that's ha ever happening. All right, so let's go and do a, a, a trim real quick. One thing that I'm excited about. So I, I think that so what i'm going to be doing is we're making a, a cigar pen i made two full sets just because these might not really work out so well so we might even have like kind of a mismatched <laughs> kind of thing i just didn't really want to do a, another um, sierra just single i wanted to do a cigar so i thought let's just put two sets together all right, so simple, simple, easy way to do this. And I mentioned this last time when people were asking, I just, just grab yourself a collet chuck. All right, so I need to, and you can tell, like this thing barely has any meat that I even need to take off. I'm being very careful with these. But all I'm doing is, if I can get this thing in here. Uh, come on. I'm just gonna load this into my collet chuck and I'm not mounting the collet chuck even, I'm just, I'm just holding it in my hand, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that I, I'm on camera, kinda. Flip the thing. I got my barrel trimmer and I just use a hand drill. I don't mess around with, I, I don't really like the fact on drill presses and stuff with barrel trimmers because you, you don't have much feeling, right? And it's going and it doesn't stop. Like you can quickly stop trimming if, if you feel something kinda, you know, messing up, let's say. Um, so I just use a, a hand drill and that's it and we're I can't see the camera <laughs> stop shaking all right it doesn't need much you just want to make sure that everything's square here and so that was just a very small amount that I took off this is nice and sharp though too so it doesn't take much you know but you can just use a collet chuck to hold the thing um, and drilling on the lathe um, with a collet chuck, I think is a, a great way to go for, for round blanks. Um, one thing that would be cool is you, you could even use your collet chuck possibly, if you could figure out a way to hold it on the drill press, you could do it that way as well. But these collets just, you know, the pressure's even and it's really hard to hold a, to hold a blank. Let me, let me get my camera over here. This is what I used to, so this is, oh, come on, work with me here. This is my pen vise. I don't know if it's really set up right, but you know, you can see it's just got these little triangle things and trying to hold a, a round blank in this thing. It works great for square ones, but, but it doesn't really hold. There's no, it's not grabbing on much. And it's also just kind of the, the forces are kind of pinching on a round blade or, or on a round blank. And it's just, it's just not ideal. Like, you know, if you can just hold your, your collet chuck somehow on your drill press, I think you're better off. Or just do it on the lathe. It works really good that way. So, there's a couple little random tips. Um, let's see here. Which one? I want to I wanna check out the metals. I really like that the metals that we did. Let's see. Which one's which here? I don't know which one is which. I think it's this one. Didn't really keep an eye on what, what, how these things go together. Um, so we'll we'll start out going with the metals. So on on the, on one set of blanks we did all like gold, bronze, copper, and silver. 
So I figure let's go with that. Uh, one thing I'm excited about, I don't think that I actually had the TBC bushings, the ones that Brian makes, for the cigar kit. Because he had mentioned that he, you know, I'm always like, oh, which ones go together? Because you got four, four bushings, you know? And I'm always like, I actually marked mine with like, I scratched the back of them, but they're kind of hard to see. And Brian was like, oh, well, mine are, the, the, the front has like a different, different grind on it and so i actually ordered some and i'm excited to use them let's see how let me i'm trying to <laughs> sorry i can't see anymore i gotta get my readers out Jeez. Uh, okay so how does this work mm, not really seeing a difference here Maybe it's on the back. Hmm. Yeah, that's not super awesome. I don't, I don't know. I'm not seeing his Brian here. <laughs> what was he talking about? I can't tell the difference. Well, I was excited. Um, I do like Brian's bushings. Maybe, maybe I did have the other ones, and I just couldn't see the thing. He said there's some sort of an identification on the front of two when, when you have a two-piece kit um, bushing set, but I'm not seeing. I'm not really seeing a difference here. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to talk to Brian about that. So I gotta go back to. Let's see here. This will this will work better if I go over here real quick. I gotta lay these out so I make sure that I put the bushings in the right order. Okay, so that's the front. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to this other view, so you can see what I'm doing here. I like to lay them out. the The longer one on a cigar kit is the the like the front, the the nib, and then this is like the clip side. And I know the big one goes there. Big ones kind of go, the biggest two go together. And then I think the smallest one goes in the front. I'm going to have to double check actually still. I always forget these. I do a lot of cigars and I still can't remember <laughs> which, <laughs> which position goes where on the kit. Um, so what I do to make sure to, that I'm not messing this stuff up is... Uh, they're very similar, the, the, fr the two farthest ends. So what I do is I just actually take a kit and measure the nib, the kind of nib thing, and then also the, the clip part. Let's see, where's that at? Oh, man, this is one of those you gotta put together. Ugh, come on. Well, I think I can just measure this one. And I know there's a baggy, but so I just measure this with my calipers. I think I think I'm gonna make a, a like a Christmas list for like resin casters and, and pen turners. This is a, a set of calipers is definitely on there. So we're looking at like 462 there. Yep, that's probably this one. I think I have it right. Oh yeah. See, this one's like four. 77 uh, so definitely not the right one 472 or 462 this one lines up perfectly or actually 467 sorry let me just double check this here. Oh, 462 huh. yeah four. all right I think that's right I'm gonna double check another kit that already has the back section put together. There's one. What I usually do is I just I just measure. I usually don't even take them out of the baggies. I just measure the the nib section. 
that right at the end. So again, like 462 or so. And then I just measure this one. That one's bigger. So out of the small ones, the bigger one is gonna go with the bigger, um, you know, whatever, bushing. So we got them all set up. So <laughs> There's nothing worse than putting the bushings in the wrong order though. And you get to the, you get to the end and you're like, oh man, this is wrong. Screwed that pen up. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe we can start turning at some point today, guys. Maybe. All right. Let's head back to the lathe. I'm going to start with the smaller one first. Get the cameras correctly set up here. Can't see the chat. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'll be out of uh, out of town next week, heading to Disneyland. Trying to get a bunch of stuff wrapped up though. And I just got an order of aluminum honeycomb in. That needs to be put away. All kinds of stuff happening, guys. It's getting crazy. Plus the holidays are coming up. Out of control. Okay, so. Crack this vent on my dust collector. The bottom one. Turn the dust collector on and we will get started here. So let me turn on the, the YouTube here. And... Okay, now I can see. And I'm just gonna use my, oh, I got the wrong one here. I'm gonna use a carbide. Negative rate cutter. I gotta swap them out. I was using a standard cutter for something. I like the, the negative rate cutters. They're less aggressive. And they work really well with resin. They're, they're, they're just extremely forgiving. Um, there's nothing wrong with the standard cutters, I don't think, for, for most things with resin. Especially for pen turning, you can easily use the standard ones for resins. But the thing that I like about the negative one, negative rate cutters, is you just don't even have to worry about a blowout. Um, so, especially for me, I'm doing a, a stream. I don't want these things blowing up particularly. Nobody does really, but um, a lot of times I'm like talking and doing stuff and these things let me not worry about it and I get excellent results. So, speed it up all the way. Can you guys see what's going on? Let's get this camera set up right. There we go. All right, let's see how this goes. I think I need a new cutter. I'm going to spin it a little bit, see if I can get a better edge. There we go. going to stop real quick see what see what's happening seems to be working and now we got some areas where there's the seed and the, the shell and it's turning but the the seed part the meat you know the, there's there's some likelihood that it may like want to pop out so especially on these ends I'm already pulling the CA glue out just to kind of hold that together Hopefully. Let's 
Kind of let that soak in a little bit. Man, I'm digging the colors on these. I like these metals. Uh, and then I'm going to actually, so I want to let it kind of soak in for a sec. But I am going to hit it with the accelerator here in two seconds. There we go. Good enough. Okay, because I don't want that stuff flip flopping around. Spraying off the, the blank. <laughs> Definitely you can tell where the seeds are. <laughs> but, I mean, they're, they're working okay. Let's get you guys in here. I mean, I'm not going particularly like super crazy careful on these. Um, I mean, they're kind of holding up, you know? You can definitely feel like, because there's this is one of those where there's like a seed jacket, you know, like the shell, and then that's the seed right there. But I mean, they're not like blowing apart. I don't know that I would recommend like, you know, I don't know that I would like sell these. I think they're kind of fun, fun things to make, you know. Um, I don't know about the longevity of the pen considering the seeds I just don't you know because we didn't stabilize the seeds and I don't even know if stabilizing would really change a whole lot with the seeds but you know we're going to CA it and hopefully everything will stay together and of course you're definitely going to want to put a, a coat of CA glue on the top of it to protect everything and hold everything kind of together it's kind of a, a novelty fun thing I don't know so far so good but as most of you guys know, oh, that something kind of came apart there. The smaller this blank gets, the more trouble we're gonna get probably. So on something like this, you know, I'm definitely not gonna be turning this down super thin. I'm gonna keep it really fat and just get the ends, you know, matched up to the bushings. I think we need to hit some more CA in here. Lots of CA going on. Still together though. And they look pretty cool actually, those seeds. Let's see if I can get this centered a little bit better. Definitely, you know, we're, we definitely have that issue with like the shell and the seed. I mean, this is, I can feel you know, the shell right there. But, I mean, there's no giant pits. Like, the seeds aren't just flat out coming out, you know? Which is kind of crazy. I actually really thought that's what was gonna happen, you know?
let's give it a little bit of a little bit of stability here. Sniff glue. <laughs> yeah. I don't like the smell of CA glue too much. That's actually one of the advantages also of the, the dust collector. Um, it's sucking air too. So it actually, if, you, if you're sensitive to CA glue, um, you, you know, you might want to really think about doing, so, and it doesn't matter what kind of dust collector. I mean, you can just, just use a shop vac, but if it's blowing, you know, sucking the air into a vacuum of some sort, you're not going to get those fumes from the CA glue as bad in your face. So just something to kind of think about. No, I don't think the, the resin didn't penetrate. They're still soft. But the resin's kind of holding things together. That's not to say that some of these things aren't gonna pop out. I, I have a feeling they might, but I think I don't I don't I don't think the resin actually got in. I, I I'm pretty sure that that's not actually what happened. Spray that. But, you know, I can feel there's definitely some, like, kind of sharp edges where that shell, where I cut into it a little bit and it kind of cracked. So we're definitely going to have to, like, you know, glob on quite a bit of CA glue on these things. But I'm almost down to the bushing on this side, which is pretty good. Got a little ways to go on the other side, but... I mean, so far, keeping my fingers crossed, we might actually get through this. But it is gonna be quite a bit of work on the, the finish. You're not just gonna, because we basically have to kind of put so much on that it, it's like a, definitely a coating on top that we can kind of sand back and, uh, and get everything nice and smooth. take a look. I might have heard something kind of come out. Get a little chip somewhere. Nope, we're still looking okay. Huh. Wow. I think I'm going to give it another another hit of CA. I'm, I'm almost, we're almost to final shape. It's a little fat in the center. I'm gonna kind of bring that down just a little bit more. Oh, for goodness sakes. I'm turning it on reverse so that I can get this thing applied a little bit easier. Oh, I think I screwed my tip up.
All right, let's see here. No, Gene, they don't, they feel different. Um, I mean, for the most, it's like, it's like a night and day thing. Like when you get to the seed, it's really soft, you know? And so I don't, I don't think that I would say it's like colored pencils. That's a little bit different. All right, oh, we're going backwards. Put it in forward mode. So a lot of this is kind of like you add some layers and then you take them off and then you add more and you know when you're doing things like this where you kind of need to fill inconsistencies a lot that's kind of what you're doing with the CA glue oh, I just got a chunk of something come out right there I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to switch over to my square, the R2. Because number one, I think it's a little sharper. But I, I, I seem to be able to get a, a little bit smoother shaping with this thing. So what do we got here? I think I did feel, yeah, we got a bit of a chunk right there that came out. I don't know if you can see that. Does that go down to the... That's gonna be a major repair. But I mean, for the most part, the rest of this is pretty good. So let's, uh, let's fill that. I'm gonna just use thick. And I'm going to try to do kind of layers. You don't want to really put a huge blob of it. You want to kind of put a little bit down, spray it. A little bit more. And you could get kind of crazy with this. You could add maybe some dyes or stuff. You don't want to add too much dye to CA glue, but I'm just going to go for au natural. <clears throat> All right, so that's filled up. But, you know, the edges of all of these little things are kind of jagged. You can definitely feel that edge. So at this point, what we need to do is I'm going to hit it again with the thin, the super thin, um, and let that kind of more penetrate into areas. Then we're going to be building up kind of a pretty decent layer on the outside. Um, so one thing I need to do is I'm probably going to have to actually bring down the ends a little bit, possibly. It's going to be kind of... I don't know, it's a little sketchy because we want this to be even with the bushing, but bringing it down even further is risky, you know. Um, but this other end isn't even actually, it needs to come down, period. So let's do a little bit of thin. Again, I'm going to put it on reverse. Actually, I don't even think I'm going to run it. I think I'm just going to kind of drizzle it. Just 
spin it around a little bit. Getting my paper towel stuck to this thing. And one thing that might be happening is we might have our bushings kind of pretty much glued on at this point, so. I'm gonna let that kind of sit and think about what it's done for one second. Looks like we got a little area that's kind of dry. To see a tutorial while you create the blanks. Um, I did these on the live stream as well. Um, maybe Mike can pull up the link to that one. So that was Wednesday. So on Wednesdays, typically I do a resin casting live stream. And so we make something with resin and then on Saturday we, you know, turn it if it's a turning project or, uh, you know, work, work with the, the, the blanks. Typically turning, that's, that's what I usually do on this channel. So at this point, what I wanna do here, I wanna see how, how stuck the bushings are. They're pretty pretty stuck I'm just tapping them there we go I got one broken free this one's pretty well stuck now oh, I got it I'd rather break these free now because you you do run the the risk of like damaging the blank trying to crack it free like that. So I'd rather do that before we get any further in. Because <laughs> if the blank's shot, then I don't want to keep turning it, you know. So one thing I'm going to do real quick here, I got a little paper towel. And I'm going to just hit the ends, kind of seal those up, get some CA glue on the end of that thing. Just to kind of seal up any seeds that are down there too. So I'm going to set that aside for the second. These bushings have some junk on them, some CA glue and stuff. So I want to make sure that that's cleaned up. In fact, there's enough CA glue on here. I'm just going to actually douse them in acetone. So I got a little jar full of acetone. Acetone will dissolve CA glue. So I'm just going to soak them in there for a minute. Got it all over my hand. That was smart. And then... Got to get the CA glue off my fingers, too, that I got on there. Um, and if you get CA glue on your fingers, um, I don't know. I don't know that I recommend doing what I'm doing. This is acetone. It will get it off your skin, but there's also debonding agents that are more meant to be applied to your skin <laughs> that I think I would recommend instead. I think it's, I don't know, it's probably just thinned down acetone. But you don't really want chemicals protruding. They're gonna, it'll, you know, if you get acetone or any of those things on your hands, it will soak into your pores, you know, um, which you don't really want. You don't wanna be absorbing acetone too much. Probably not gonna hurt you, but you know, over, over long periods of time, it could cause problems. So if I'm a little wacky, guys, that's why. 
All right, so I'm just gonna wipe these guys off, inspect them. We don't have any of that crud on there anymore. So that's good, that's what we like to see. This one's still got some crud though. gonna use my fingernail to kind of pull some of this stuff off. I think it needs a little bit more time in the bath. Now another thing that we need to kind of do is also make sure that the ends don't have a bunch of stuff or else they're not gonna fit on the bushing. So unfortunately when you're doing things like this it's kind of a process you know you're not gonna just turn it dump a bunch of glue on it and move on you got to kind of mess around so this is just a pen mandrel took a hole punch sandpaper that way i can clean up the ends square them back up you could maybe i don't know that i'd recommend doing this but you could maybe use a barrel trimmer i think you're smarter <laughs> i think the smart way to do it is just grab some sandpaper like this and i'm referencing the the, the tube pushing down on it so it's it's squaring it's not like crooked. You don't want to do that. Okay, so we got our blank back to ready. Let's just get this uh, bushing out and we'll be back to turning and we can finish this guy up and hopefully, hopefully it'll work. But the thing is, acetone will soak in right away. So I still highly recommend. You're better off wearing gloves with it. And, uh, and all that junk. You know what I mean? Okay. Just want to stay safe. If you can avoid getting acetone all over yourself, you're going to be better off in the long run, I think. That's, that's the main point, I guess. All right, so I need to get a little bit of material off this end, probably on that end a little bit. I might take a couple of quick passes, very gently. <laughs> and we're forward. Okay, so let's get back into this here. Actually, I think one of my problems also, like I said, I really think this cutter is a little bit kind of dull which is not, I don't recommend doing this, but I don't know that I have another one handy. Okay. Something did kind of come off somewhere here. Uh, That's a chunk. I don't know. Okay, so I think we're looking okay. Just gonna All I'm doing is trying to kind of smooth that. It was kind of a bumpy mess of CA glue. But these ends, I'm trying to bring down because we're going to be dumping a bunch of CA on it. Okay, 
let's see where we're at here, guys. Still looking okay. A little bit of a chunk right there. So we're gonna do a little bit more spot, kind of dousing with the thin. And then what I'm gonna do is start building up layers to try and get everything smooth and I'm actually basically gonna cut that back. So I wanna build a pretty thick layer on top that I can actually turn back smooth. So let's see here, we got our paper towel here. So I basically probably just glued them back on to the bushings, but it's just something you're gonna have to kind of deal with on these. All right, so I think I'm done with the thin. Now, I think we're gonna go with medium flex. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I'm usually not particularly good with the mediums, but we really need to build up a lot. So we're gonna give it a shot. So that's starting to feel smoother. I'm gonna take some light cuts and just kind of turn that back a little bit. This is gonna be kind of a process. This is not gonna be a quick one, you know. <laughs> it's gonna be kind of a back and forth trying to put a little on, take a little off. Smooth it out. Very light cut. All I'm trying to do is smooth. That might be, that might not be bad. That might be pretty good right there. All right, so. I gotta be honest, guys. I think I'm Again, this is not gonna be a world-class, amazing, perfect pen, I don't think. But I think it's feeling pretty good. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is some like kind of heavy sanding. Real quick, I just wanna see how stuck these bushings are again. Because I think I'd rather crack them now than later. Okay, so that one's not bad. And just for anybody that doesn't know what I'm doing right now, when I'm, when I'm cracking the bushings, quote unquote, I just tap right there. 
tap the bushing on the metal and it'll usually crack so that one's pretty stuck take this one out there we go so I'm gonna look at it again and see if it's fretted up which it probably is yeah it's pretty credit up oh I lost my bushing so we're gonna go back I'm gonna clean up the end of this one again we want good you know we want it to mate well with the bushing so I'm gonna clean up any extra material that's on the end here <laughs> should be good but I'm gonna soak this thing in acetone again clean that up yeah they look pretty cool I mean I don't know I, I mean if I'm being completely honest these turned out way better than I thought they were gonna turn out but I kind of thought it'd be neat you know just dumping a bunch of those seeds in they'd be all at weird angles and this I mean this is I mean this isn't I didn't really have a picture in my mind of how they turn out, you know? But that's pretty sweet. Like, it's better than I expected it to look. And so far, we've made it through. I mean, it would be pretty tough to, at this point, to screw it up to the point where, like, I gotta trash the blank, you know? I think we made it. Okay. That back on. I gotta go find that other bushing. There it is. <laughs> that one's pretty clean. All right. And one other thing, you know, you can use the, if you have a mandrel, you can use the plastic bushings and you don't have that, that issue of them sticking to your bushings, you know? Um, I don't really like mandrels. Uh, I'm just used to doing it this way, so. You know, it's a few extra steps, but I, I just kind of like everything, um, the way it works. Okay, so now, basically we're just gonna apply a CA finish at this point. Um, get you guys back in the action. Gotta get some paper towels. See what the chat's up to. I think the big question is, is all the hassle worth it on this one? You know, it's pretty cool, but you can get some pretty cool looking pen blanks without this much trouble, you know? So you just gotta, I, I, you know, I don't think I'd make a, a batch of these pens. Most likely not kind of a fun one-off type of deal um, you know if you know somebody that's like a, they, they love pumpkin seeds or pumpkins or something like that you know this would be a really fun fun thing to make for someone like that all right so I'm gonna switch to my thin flex and just we're gonna build a bunch of coats this way and I just want to kind of see see how this goes basically if I can get this smoothed out I want to add a couple more layers. I know that I said I was going to do some heavy sanding, but I want to add a couple layers and just try and see if I can smooth it out a little bit more even before we start sanding so that I don't have to, you know, basically sand as much off. smooth all right I think we're gonna start sanding here I'm gonna give it a couple seconds it's still a little bit 
Maybe even hit it with a little bit more accelerator. Try and get it hardened up. I would probably recommend waiting. Maybe give it 10, 15 minutes. It'll, it'll harden up even more. Um, so I'm going to start sanding. I think I'm going to try 180. Well, let's let's see what happens. Let's try 240. If if it's not really doing anything, we'll we'll move down to 180. We got to kind of see what's see what's going on a little bit. Oh, let's give it a little bit of tightening. I think these are actually going to be okay. It's going to take a little bit of work on the finish, though. We're going to have to kind of play around. I think there's a couple areas that are a little bit um, low that I'm going to have to recover, basically. But we'll have to see we'll, we'll, once we get a little bit of sanding going here. Yeah, it's looking okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know that I would want to do the work for die stabilizing pumpkin seeds. <laughs> the problem is like getting the, the juice off of them is gonna be a pain. And there's other things that you could that are fairly similar shape that you can just dump in there, move on, they turn well, you know, it's it, it's tough. It's it's a question of do you wanna, you know is it worth it to you to get, you know, true pumpkin seeds? going through all those steps or, or trying to find something kind of similar. I don't know. So this is actually looking extremely good. There's a couple low spots. So I'm, I'm gonna have to add some more CA. Like I said, it's gonna be one of those things where you, you kind of add some, some CA, take some off, add some, take it off. Because what the first thing we need to do is get a very, you know, a totally smooth surface on here. Um, so you got to kind of fill any low spots and then even things out a little bit. But, I mean, it's looking way better than I expected, let's just say. You know? And at this point, like I would probably on a normal blank that I didn't, I wasn't worried about things fa falling apart. I would probably just pull out a, a tool and, and cut the, you know, this smooth. But at this point we got everything kind of filled. There's no jagged edges on the edge of those seeds. We're going for sandpaper. We're pulling out the, <laughs> you know, the quote unquote 80 grit smoother. 80 grit uh, gouge and uh, we're just going to kind of sand our way through the end of this because we've basically we we did it <laughs> we got through this thing and it's it's going to work out at least this half of the blank we'll have to see about the next one but that's looking pretty good again a couple of little low spots here and there down here So 
So I'm basically sanding through a couple areas of CA glue down to the blank. So we basically need to, you know, do the CA finish at this point. I wouldn't call what I was doing before like putting a CA finish on. It was more just kind of filling and trying to create a, a few layers to make everything smooth, like filling in a sense. Now we need to do the actual kind of finish, I think. It's one way to think about it, anyway. <clears throat> All right, so that is looking fabulous. And I really like the colors. Um, I like those metals. I think I, that might be something I might add to my, um, add to my store even. I like it so much. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, wipe this off with some denatured alcohol just to get any dust flakes off we're actually going to sand this up a little bit higher um, just so we don't see a bunch of scratch marks under the finish so we're going to go to 400 and then i'm going to use a, a 500 kind of pad thing just to kind of get most of those scratches out they may get hidden if we just applied finish over the top of this but i think we're better off sanding this up just a little bit further before we do the finish. Dave Porter, what's up, man? What are you up to this fine weekend? Okay. I got this uh, this little kind of pad thing that's just 500. It just kind of smooths out, takes out any kind of just like a little final touch kind of thing. Bring it up just a little higher than that 400. 400, 600, somewhere in that area, I think is good. Okay, now we need to wipe it off again before we apply the finish. You don't want to do that with acetone. It'll, it'll dissolve it. So don't do that. And then we're going to go back to the, the super fast thin. I need to move the camera out of my way here. It's getting a little crowded in the, the turning zone. And then I'll get myself some more paper towels. And then I'm going to put about four or five coats on. And I think we'll be good. Maybe six. Doing this the wrong way. Gotta get my hands right. Oh, sorry about that. Slipped on the tripod there. Here's my. So, what I'm using is Mercury Thin Flex. This stuff is made to be a finish. Um, and you, you want to use the, the accelerator. It's made to be used with the accelerator. Um, otherwise, it can stay a little soft, and not, not cure as, as well. But I really like this stuff. It gives you kind of, for me, it's like the perfect amount of open time. Sometimes the thinner ones set up fat, well, generally thinner CA glues usually set up faster. This stuff gives you enough time, and I like the the viscosity, how thick it is. It's like not super thin, but not thick. So it's just, it works great for me. There's lots of different options out there for CA glues, lots of different ways to apply it. I typically, just because of the way that I apply things, 
I guess. I like the thin ones and just building up a bunch of coats of thin. A lot of people start out, they'll like seal it with a thin, then switch over to like the medium and then maybe end with thin. So there's like a billion different ways to do it. Whatever way works best for you to get the best results, that's what you you know should do. Um, and you might have to try a few of these things. It took me, you know, a while to kind of figure out what works best for me. I tried a bunch of different, um, you know, methods before I kind of settled on my, the way that I do things now. And I still tweak things sometimes, you know? So don't feel bad if it's, if you're like, I don't know, I've tried a, a few things. Sometimes it just takes a while. A little bit of practice too. Been keeping busy. Yeah, I hear you. Busy time right now. Man, this thing's looking sweet, guys. I'm gonna be completely honest. Hope we can get the second half done. <laughs> you know, that's the problem with two-piece pens. You're all stoked because you got through the first half and then you blow up the second half worst. Uh, we got a little bit of a, got a little divot right there. That sucks. Thought I was done. Looks like we got one right there too. Let's see what happens after we sand. Might be able to kind of get away with it. It just looks like there's a couple little low spots on that end. This side looks great, I think. A little low spot there. And this end has a couple, so let's do a little bit of sanding. I'm going to sand with just 400 grit now. This is more like my typical kind of finish method. Apply the CA break it back with some 400 and just see, you know, what does it look like? Any shiny spots are going to be low spots. So it'll kind of give you an idea. You don't have to sand a lot. You know, again, you don't want to, now we're trying to just build our finish up. You don't want to sand it all off if, if you can help it. So the game with CA finishes is to try and get it on as smooth as you possibly can without having to sand it all off, you know. That's that's where you kind of run into problems. So we got a few little, little low spots right there. I'm gonna have to apply some more, so I'm just gonna try, try and smooth this out, see if I can get it. Kind of close. To the surrounding areas. I'm gonna have to sand this back. A couple little weird bumps on this end too. That's got kind of a pretty big low spot. So this is the, the kind of the problem let's say or the tough part about if you have a blank that has a lot of you know you gotta fill a bunch of stuff with CA glue you may have to apply finishes a lot, you know, do, do multiple rounds of this. To get everything kind of, you know, even, evenly filled. Oh yeah, that's a definite low spot right there. All right, probably gonna have to pull out the medium again actually to fill that. I think what's happening is it's kind of, it. I had sanded it back down into the, where, where you had like the kind of shell. And so I, what I need to do now is fill with more CA glue to get that kind of covered. Yeah, 
now. All right, so like I said, it's a process, guys. I'm gonna wipe this off, the sanding dust. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out that medium again. See if I can kind of build up a little bit more. The nice thing is at this point it's super smooth. Like most of the blank is totally smooth. We're not trying to fill a bunch of divots and craziness. So this should go pretty quick at this point. But you can use your thicker, you know, the thicker ones typically will build, build up more quicker, you know. A lot of times if I just have a pit or something, I just pull out thick. Um, I don't even mess around with like the medium, but in this case, I kind of want to just apply it fairly evenly across the surface. So the medium is going to work just fine. medium flex and I use a couple different ones I use Starbond um, I use the Starbond super fast thin and they're thick for a lot of different things I really like these two Starbond's got some pretty good finish finishes um, but like I said it, for, I just the mercury thin flex I this is what I my go-to for my like the, the final finishes and then for doing things like this, I'll use the medium flex from Mercury. Just, you know, sometimes you just got to try a few different things and see which one works best for you. Now, one of the problems when you're building, you're trying to add a bunch of stuff on top, that's where you really get your bushing stuck. So we're gonna actually stop again. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure these things aren't totally stuck on. Okay, that one's good. That one's good. still feel kind of a there's still a couple little low spots right there so we're going to put another coat on the medium I'm going to try and just get this in build so I really globbed on a bunch on this end so I'm gonna have to sand that back a little bit <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do another round, like, kind of like that on this end. All right, hopefully we got everything filled now. Not bad. 
Okay. Now we're going to have to go back to basically applying the finish on top because I had to kind of sand quite a bit back. But at this point, my patience is pretty much over this, this half of the blank. So I'm going to uh, wipe this off with denatured alcohol real quick. We'll apply finish. And we're going to move on to the second half because all this work could be for nothing if the second half doesn't actually even work. So, let's put on a few coats. Besides, lunch is calling me at some point here, so. Ah, oh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. How's it going, Jim? Another CA glue fiasco. But overall, the blank turned pretty well. It's definitely doable. glue. I think I'm going to put on two more coats with this thin flex and then we're going to sand it up and we're going to move on and call it a day and I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be pretty decent. Okay, so now we're going back to 400 grit sandpaper. And all I'm doing, I just want to kind of get everything smooth. If there's any little ridges, lines that, you know, there's almost no way to get this thing on dead, you know, get each coat on perfect. No application lines. But hopefully you can get it on pretty good and then just do some light sanding. With something like 400, maybe 600 smooth that out. That's looking really good. Okay. Perfect. That's all it needed. Actually, I must have got on that last coat like really, really smooth. I got to plug in the camera or else it's going to die here. So let's do that. And then hopefully I can get the second one done fairly quick. You can see how this pen turns out. All right, so I'm turning off the dust collector. We're going to switch to wet sanding. So like I said, a lot of times, I mean, I could probably turn off the dust collector and just do wet sanding for all those steps that I just did. But, you know, while I'm doing like CA glue and all that kind of stuff, but what I like is the, the dust collector also pulls the CA glue fumes out of my face. So... A lot of times I'll just leave it on while I'm doing all that stuff in dry sand. So I'm gonna switch out my water cup here. Get some fresh water. And I can't wait to see how this thing turns out, like polished up, because it's already looking pretty good. I'll give you guys a shot real quick before we start wet sanding. 
but we're pretty much at the finish line here. I mean, and so I, it's it's a little dull right now. Got a couple little low spots. I'm gonna just look the other way. I don't know if they may not really even show up in the end. But man, these colors, I love these colors. The gold, copper, bronze. The copper and bronze kind of merge together a little bit, but they turned out great. And one of the things that I was saying when we cast these is the pumpkin seeds, because they're gonna be all like in weird, you know, like weird um, orientations. When you pour your resin in, it's gonna really mix up well. And so we really definitely got that. Um, you know, that's one kind of advantage. Um, pumpkin seeds are kind of small, so you can get them like kind of close in there. But um, if you're doing vertical pours, something similar like that, that may be a little bit bigger, you know, um, I'm trying to think like, like the super, super mini pine cones, those would be great. You could probably just dump them in the, the pipe and uh, get that same kind of effect. But yeah, it is pretty psychedelic, huh? Um, but yeah, so that's one of the nice things if you're doing like a vertical pour or, or any kind of pour, like if, even if you're doing a, in a trough type, you know, like a, a block mold brick, you're, you're going to get the same kind of thing where it kind of, you know, when you're pouring over stuff, the resin disperses, you know, without you really having to, you know, create swirls, it's going to create them for you. I think that's the easiest way to explain that. Do a little bit. So this is the Zona paper. This is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 750 grit, I want to say. I don't need to do a lot of sanding here. I'm just going to do a little bit of side. Move on to the gray. Then we'll go to the Zona or the, the Magic Juice. And the gray, I want to say, is somewhere around uh, 1150 grit, something like that, maybe. Kind of hard. It's in microns, so you got to kind of convert and do all this stuff when you're talking. What, what would it be in, like, sandpaper grits? It's somewhere in that neighborhood. Stuff works great. I love it. I only use the first two, maybe three grits usually, and then I move on to the Magic Juice plastic, uh, you know, pen polish stuff. Don't really need to go much higher. You're kind of, um, you're doing kind of double duty if you go higher, you know, um, with the mad, with the, the Zona papers and then switch to magic juice. It's doing, you know, some of the, many of those grits are kind of the same. So, I don't you don't really need to go much higher than like somewhere between like thousand and two thousand and then you can move on to the magic juice. Okay. Magic juice. So once you get that, that build up, you know, you get your CA done, then everything's pretty quick. <laughs> Not a lot to it after that. Uh, I'm gonna get some, I like to use the, the blue towels. The, they're a little bit softer than those white paper towels that I use for this step. So I use these, these are like those, the Scott brand shop towels. Just a little bit softer, you know, less abrasive, let's say. And if you're trying to polish something, you know, you don't really want the polishing cloth to be abrasive. And then I'm even going to switch to a different one when we get to the last two grits of, of uh, Magic Juice. But this stuff is a liquid polish, six steps. I actually need to get a new. I'm starting to run a little bit low on a couple of these ones, I think. 
Um, but it, man, this stuff works excellent for pens. This is just best way to go, I think. You just add a little bit of a drop there. I run my lathe at somewhere between 1500 and 2000. I like to kind of slow it down, apply it. And this is not like a friction polish. We're not trying to create heat. We're just letting the, you know, the, the plastic polish stuff polish, like let it do its job. Kind of think of it like almost like sandpaper. It's got some grit in it. You don't need to push harder. You just need to let it spin around on there. And then you just wipe off any excess and then move on. Oh, this guy exploded. Step one done. Step two. And I mean, after step one, it's already glossy. I mean, honestly, you could stop after step one, I think, and, and nobody would be like, oh, would you forget to polish it, you know? Like it looks great after one and you got five more steps, so you can imagine. It's it glossy. Step two done. Redone. Four. And then what I switch to for the final two steps is this stuff. Um, it's like, what do they call it? I got links to this in the, in the description. Scrub it. Reusable wipes. You find it in like the cleaning section. Um, but I, it's, it's even softer, less abrasive, I think. I think it might actually be like non-abrasive because it's basically a, like a microfiber material. So I just use that to, to apply the last two. It's super soft and it seems to work fine. Audio is going in and out. I don't know. I don't think it's me. It's every, everything looks good on my end. I don't know though. Maybe uh, refresh the, the, the feed possibly. Or like open and close the app or something like that. Okay, so step five. And step six. I'm not even sold that step, step six actually does anything. I really can't see the difference between five and six, but I got six, so I always apply it.
Okay, are you guys ready for this? Oh man. I know I am. I wish this I wish this was a Sierra. I really just want to make this pen and it and it all worked. I'm a little worried about the second half. Wow. That's looking pretty good. No major flaws. Well, there's one right there, but there's a couple flaws, but man, I'll tell you what. This turned out way better than I expected that to. Pretty cool looking. Woo! Oh man, I don't know if I got two more hours in me <laughs> to get the second half done. And that's the only problem with these types of things, guys. Oh. Why do I always have to do the five hour streams when I have like 50 other things to do? Okay, so hopefully the bushings aren't stuck onto this thing. That would be great too. Oh, we got one. Uh, one's a little bit kind of, I'm gonna do my tap method. Popped off. And once again, I'm gonna come back at this point because there may be some, some CA glue kind of hanging off the ends and you don't wanna press parts on if there's CA glue hanging off the end of that thing. So I'm gonna kind of trim that or you know square this back up and clean up the ends so that we don't, because the worst thing is when you get done, you know, with your CA finish and everything all is great. And then you press the parts together and crack the finish because there's, you know, material CA glue kind of hanging off the ends and you, you know, press it, it can crack your finish. So you always want to clean up the ends, make sure that they're good. <laughs> no extra material. And switch to this guy here. I'm gonna have to move this back, I think. Okay. Pretty slick. Yeah, not too bad, man. I mean, I wasn't even sure if it was actually gonna if I was gonna if it was gonna blow up in my face or not, so I'm happy no matter what. Now we just need to get through the second one without any major problems. This is where now, now it's on, you know, like if, if the first half of a two piece pen blows up and you're like, oh, whatever. But if you get the first half done, you know, then the second half, you're like, you better, you better work number two. Who does number two work for? Okay. And again, I'm just gonna drop these the, the bushings into some acetone and that'll clean up any extra CA glue that might be on there. Let that soak for a bit. All right, dust collector back on, I need a drink. I think I'm gonna look and see if I have a new cutter as well, real quick. <clears throat> I think that might maybe make things go a little bit smoother. Uh, oh, I do. Only got one more. Well, I'm going to rotate this one real quick. See if I can get a little bit more life out of it. All right, <clears throat> here we go. I know the pressure, lots of pressure.
All right, so far, it's going all right. Man, there really aren't any pumpkin seeds down here. I might, I might kind of get out of, <laughs> uh, get out of it. We, oh yeah, we did the, we did these ones second, and we were kind of dropping some seeds in, then pouring resin. So this whole end of the blank may not really have <laughs> seeds in it at all, because I don't know that I necessarily filled, you know, like the whole tube up. Or they could have like kind of floated up and it looked like it was full. So <laughs> the question is, hold on a minute. Actually guys, I wanna flip this. I wanna flip this because it's gonna be I did it the wrong way. Hopefully I didn't go too far yet. Nice. And this actually will work in my favor. Because I can turn this side down more and there's no seeds in here. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit, but... Oh, what did I just do? Um, so the problem that I just... What, what I almost did was the pen would be like this. And I had the extra seeds down here, so it wasn't matching up. I just kind of stuck the, the things in, not really thinking about it. So, dodged a bullet there, guys. <laughs> dodged a bullet. So I think I'm gonna, I'm already gonna pull out the CA glue because I got a really good shot of getting through this thing now. And I'm gonna take every precaution to try and get through this thing with a winning pen. So, you know, that can be kind of another strategy is, you know, you can just minimize how many, you know, how much material, how many pumpkin seeds in this case you actually put in a blank. Um, kind of do like a half and half type of deal. Let's continue on. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually pretty hungry. Oh. Like I said, the, the, I mean, actually I would say like three quarters of this blank is just resin. All that is, this is the stuff that I got to watch out for, so I can kind of, And like I said, the, luckily, the nice thing is I'm, I'm lucking out because the way that this, the way everything is working, this is the fatter end of the pen. So I can, I can, I got lucky, basically.
unexpected planning. It's looking good. I think just for good measure, we're going to go for a little bit more CA glue. Certainly ain't going to hurt anything. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's stop and take a t uh, peek at it. See what we got. Uh, we got a little bit of a divot there. That's going to be thick CA, but that's an easy one to fill. It's just kind of a pit. But I mean, really, the rest of this, actually, this end is not that big of a deal. We got some, some edges there. Yeah. So we're looking pretty good here. We got our thick. Let's just blow that out again. So there's no dust. Uh, another thing that you could maybe do is, you know, use kind of dust with CA glue. I don't know that I'd really go for like the resin shavings, but if you had like actual like sawdust, um, that that's a good way to go for this. Let's see, do I have any? It's, it's just sawdust. Oh, actually, I do. Go over to your your disc sander. pick up some sawdust from your disc sander and I'm just going to kind of pack that in there oh, it's <laughs> the, the only problem with the, the dust collector is it's sucking the dust away that's it I don't know if you guys seen this one before And then I'm going to use thin CA to kind of lock things down in there.
And I mean, honestly, you could probably do that with, with, with these things. You know, like some of these low spots. I, I gotta be honest, guys. I think that might be the easiest way to deal with this stuff. I'm gonna go get me some serious sawdust. Why didn't I think of this earlier? And that'll base it's it's basically the same color as the seeds. So what I'm gonna do here, let's see, we got something big there, but I'm just gonna try and kind of pack this sawdust down in. Let's see how this goes. And then so like rather than like having to put a bunch of layers of CA glue, like really build up massive layers of it I'm just packing it full of sawdust I don't know I'm curious to see how this actually works out all right Chris have a good one I think I got CA glue all over my the bed of my lathe. That's not good. wasn't really paying attention there okay we're gonna put a little paste wax on there now not a big deal you know like you can still just get rid of it with acetone but that pulls your wax or any other you know protectants off the the bed of the lathe so got to come back and fix it up otherwise you're gonna have squeaky Squeaky banjo. I hate squeaky banjo. That's the worst band ever. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Smooth banjo, that's a good band. Smooth banjo. came out. I have to do another fill there, but let's see. I can't even find that that other one that I filled. I ended up kind of cutting a lot of that back, so I'm going to have to do that again. But I think that worked. I, I Literally, I can't even see the the first one that I just did. Same problem.
<clears throat> All right, this time I'm going to take a very smooth light cut just to kind of clean up the craziness. What I want to do is just kind of sand that back and take a look at it. Well, let's just stop and look. Yeah, that, that seemed to work okay, I think. Let's get something a little bit more aggressive with the sandpaper here. Not too bad, so light kind of tan colored uh, sawdust, not a bad filler for pumpkin seeds. I'm going to take a couple more light passes. We're pretty much done and we can start doing like the, the kind of filling and filling slash smoothing pretty much where we're at at this point so this thing's looking pretty good it's got a lot of vibration going on though all right which means I think that we need to Kind of fill it a little bit so we're going to go back to that medium flex i'm going to get you guys a shot kind of close up so you can see what we're working with here but i mean it's looking good it's really good can you guys see so i filled in right here with some of that sawdust and then there was another little like pit that frankly I can't even find at this point. It's just gone. Got another one right there it feels like. So we got we still have some pits. I mean I could mess around with that sawdust, but I think at this point we're just gonna go put a put a few of these medium flex coats on and fill things up. And I don't think this is gonna take as long as the first one. Cause there's, I mean, there's just not as much stuff to fill, but overall it's all pretty, it turned pretty well, this one, you know, there wasn't as many large seed, you know, parts and stuff like that. So, all right, David, have a good one. Thanks for joining the fun tonight. <clears throat> oh God. scissors go there they are Maybe one more, one or two more. And frankly, I don't need to fill anything on that other end, so I don't know why I was 
applying more down there. All right, let's let's stop there. So I think I did three coats. Let's do a little bit of sanding real quick. I got 240 grit again. Just to kind of see what this, I don't care about this side, I just want to get the CA off. I can get the thin on better. So I just want to actually kind of mostly sand that off the, the resin part of the blank. All right, so how are we looking right now? Got a little bit of a low spot there. That must just be more from turning. Most of this looks like it's pretty filled up. I think I did good there. So we just need to kind of, again, the game plan is you put on a lot of CA glue with, when you're doing something like this and then you're gonna take most of it off because all we're trying to do is get that surface smooth. I'm going to switch to 180 sandpaper 180 grit it looks like I got some smoothing to do and frankly I don't really want to risk the tool <laughs> not so much that I'm worried that it's going to blow up the blank or anything I'm more worried that it's just going to cause me to have to do more work like it's just going to kind of slightly chip a few things So the 180 will just get it done quicker with no repercussions at all. And I think it'll save time actually in this case. We got a little bit of a low spot down at the end by the bushings. Just gonna try to kind of sand that a bit. Then we'll skip back up to the 240. Watching some football, well, today was a little bit, this one took more uh, more effort with the CA glue, so you're okay. Plenty, plenty still going. We got half of it done and it didn't even explode in my face. Go figure. That off, wipe it off with some denatured alcohol. I'm going to go up to 400 grit. Still need to add some more here. There's kind of a low spot down on this end. Actually, I can feel something else. Oh, that's low too. Shoot. Yeah, we're going to have to put a lot more in here. Basically kind of sanded down to the sunflower seed. On that one. Dang it. I'm going to go with thick.
Which game were you watching, Paul? Some new, new sandpaper. That one's just not doing anything. Ah, navy. Very cool, very cool. Okay, I think I'm gonna switch to the back to that medium flex for this. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Like I said, this the, the tough thing is trying to fill gaps and do all this kind of stuff. This just takes time um, to to get you know to get the layers on, get it smoothed out, and you got to do a lot of back and forth. All right, I'm gonna wipe it with alcohol again. <clears throat> and we're gonna go back to, we're gonna put another couple coats of the, well, first I'm gonna hit the whole thing with 400. See how that goes. Okay. Then we're gonna switch back to thin flex mode. Need a new paper towel here. We're just trying to just trying to kind of fill any little pits and gaps. This isn't like applying a finish. It's doing body work basically on, on, the, on the pen. Think of these steps as like Bondo. Now one thing I'm gonna have to do is, uh, at this point I've, I've kind of globbed on a ton of glue and probably glued the heck out of the blank onto the um, onto the bushing. So once I knock this down, do a little bit of the sanding here. 
I'm actually going to stop and remove the bushings. Mainly this one. I don't think there's really any glue on the other end. That's looking good. Yeah, that's looking real good now. So I just want to, I want to get, there's a few streaks of CA glue in the middle, and there's not even sun, uh, pumpkin seeds, so that's just excess CA glue that we don't need. almost to the point where we can start um, just putting our CA actual finish on. I just want to get this thing kind of sanded up a little bit higher. I've been sanding with 240 grit, um, so I want to get this thing up to uh, somewhere between four and 600. So I'm going to switch to the 400 grit. still feel something there. Wipe it again with denatured alcohol before we put the finish on. Make sure there's no dust or anything on there. And we'll be ready to rock and roll, guys. That one didn't take that long. That one was pretty smooth. But I also had a quarter of the <laughs> pumpkin seeds in there. So there's that. All right, are you guys ready for CA finish? I am. Okay, I'm going to go back to the, the Thin Flex by Mercury. This is the one that I like to use for finishing because I can just get it on nice and smooth and it polishes up great. So let's see, Paul, just turn your first caribou Lumalite hybrid and discovered how careful one was. Yeah, material densities can be a pain. That's, you know, a lot of times that's what stabilizing does for you, um, you know, with some certain materials, is it just brings things a little bit closer, but it's kind of hard with like, you know, antler and all that kind of stuff even if it was stabilized still not you know there's there's a difference there
Oh, I was going to take the... Try to get the blank off the bushings. Haha. <laughs> Whoops. We'll do that right now. This might be fun. This side's pretty well just coated in CA glue. Uh, let's see. We'll see how this goes. That one popped off fine. Oh, that one came off. Huh. So again, I just wanted to make sure that these things would break free and it's a lot easier or less painful, let's say, to, uh, to do it before you're totally done because if something goes wrong at the end, that sure sucks. So now I'm just cleaning up the ends. There's, there's some overhanging CA glue off the ends of these things. That'll be a problem when I try to put the bushings back on. Just wanna clean up that material. Shouldn't be a lot on this end, but this isn't gonna hurt anything either. Now, the bushings probably are caked with a bunch of stuff in between and overhanging. So I'm gonna soak these in acetone real quick clean them off, and then we'll be good to go. So let's see here, I gotta, and I had the first two soaking this whole time that we've been working on the second uh, blank. So pull those guys out. They're ready to be, they're ready for next time. Okay, so I just keep a little jar of acetone over on the bench, and when I, whenever I do a CA finish, I just uh, drop, you know, when I'm done turning the pen, I just drop the bushings in the, the little jar, and we're good to go. Let it soak, clean it off. Okay, so this one's ready. The other one needed a couple more seconds. Oh, that's looking great. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we're back in action, guys. Back in action. Put a few more coats on this guy. And then we just gotta sand and polish. Assemble the pen. Easy peasy.
This episode was brought to you by CA Glue. <laughs> we used a little bit of it today. I think that ought to be good for our finish. And I'm just gonna sand this back a little bit with some 400 grit, very lightly. Just taking out any of the ridges from applicating, applicating the Putting, whatever, applying, <laughs> applicating. I need food, guys. I need food. Um, applying the CA glue, you get, you get a little, little, some ridges and things. So I just want to take those out. Any low spots are going to be shiny. We don't want to take off a bunch of CA glue, you know? We don't want to remove the finish. We just want to smooth the finish. Okay, I think that's probably good. I'm gonna hit it with the 500. Real quick. That thing's looking awesome, guys. Check this out. Let's get you guys in there. It's gonna be a pretty sick pen. I think. I don't even know which, which cigar kit I'm gonna use. That's another problem. Okay, so wet sanding time. We can turn the... Uh, oh, the quiet, it's so nice. Okay. Wet sanding. Start with the green. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Just in time for some wet sanding and polishing. Move on to the gray. And we'll do a little bit of blue. Why not, right? Okay, wet sanding is done. We're flying, we're flying through this. Time for the magic juice. This is where the magic happens, guys. You guys ready for magic juice? Okay. Six steps. Gotta go get some more blue towels. Oops. That didn't really work too well. Try that again. There we go.
All right, step one. Let's do this. All right, one down. Step two. Wow, looking good. Step three. Four. Okay, and then I'm going to go get the, uh, the microfiber cloth stuff. I need to make some more of those soon. Okay. Step five. And step six. Okay, here we go, guys. Oh, man. That's looking good. Like I said, I got a little lucky because most of this is resin, but there are some pumpkin seeds in the front end. Okay, so now time to well first I got to pick a kit I'm not sure which kit to go with on this one um, it's a cigar that's for sure but I don't know which plating I want to put on it you know Let's 
So let's see here. Let me get things cleaned up over here real quick. Let me get going here. Let me put down something clean just in case. All right, let's see. We got, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe just chrome is probably the, or gunmetal, actually. Uh, gunmetal. I got a gold and black. I mean, I don't know. It, they, they can probably all work pretty well. Gunmetal and gold. I got a rose gold or like copper. Just plain gold, I don't know. Let me look at this thing again. Yeah, I think that the, I think the best way to go is gun metal on this one. Okay, so let's get our parts. And again, I'm going to drop these. I, I don't think there's really a whole lot of CA glue on those bushings at this point because I kind of cleaned them right before we were done. But I am going to soak that. <clears throat> and then let's see here. This view. Um, one thing I like to do is there's usually a little bit of polish. No, not that time, I guess. On the insides of these things. And just clear that off so that it doesn't squish out or anything. And then this is how this thing's going to be lined up. Let's see here. Zoom in pretty far. See those things? Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the. I think gunmetal's a good one on these. So I like to lay out my parts and just get everything so I know what I'm doing. No mistakes, you know what I mean? No mistakes. Oh, am I missing? Oh, okay. Thought I was missing a part. Is there? Cigars are nice because you can, um, there's not a lot of you don't have to worry about getting everything all perfectly lined up. You know, you can take them apart and put them back together again, the two parts, pretty easily. You, you, there's nothing to screw together, I guess, you know. It's kind of nice. Compared to like a, a roller ball, you kind of need to get those things mounted right the first time if they're trying to line, if you're trying to line things up, you know. Otherwise you gotta like, you know, take it apart, like really. I'm going to start with this part. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little bit thick. I'm a little bit proud on the end of that. This is not going to be like a world class pin by any means. I'm just happy I got through it. Heck is going on here? Okay. Okay. Now, the big question, how is this going to all line up? Does it matter?
Ooh, I like that. Okay. So. I kind of like that too. I think I'm going to put this thing right there. Ink cover thing. Put this on. And then I got to look at this one more time, real quick. I'll look at this real quick here. So I liked. I think like that. I'm a little bit proud on you know where where things meet up a couple places. Just because I added so much of that CA glue, it just kind of made it a little bit proud. But, I mean, really, whatever. It's hardly noticeable. I love the colors in this thing. What do you guys think? Pretty cool. I'm happy with it. Whew, it was took a while. Took a little bit of you know. Took a little bit of time, but in the end, I think it was worth it. Whew. I don't know if anybody's still awake. I don't think so. Let me put my these pen kits put away. I have. Ah, I did good. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thanks for joining the stream tonight. So uh, just a reminder, guys, next week's streams are not happening because I'm going to be at uh, in Disneyland. <laughs> so uh, won't be able to do any live streams, but I will probably be posting a few things on Instagram, maybe maybe even YouTube shorts. We'll see. I'm not sure about that, but definitely on Instagram, I'll post some stuff and Facebook. And uh, yeah, so Got some pretty cool plans though when we come back. Uh, we're working on the, the, the you know, holiday, the Christmas, is it Christmas? Yeah, I guess Christmas kind of themed um, 3D print model. That's gonna be coming up pretty soon. Um, but I got a really good one planned when we come back. So the next live stream is gonna be on, pulling up the calendar, on Wednesday the 23rd is when I'll be back in action. And so it should be pretty cool. I think you guys are going to enjoy that stream. Uh, let's see here. Who would have thought? I know, pumpkin seeds. Who would have thought? It? Well, I kind of sort of had an idea, but I don't know. I, I was just kind of thinking like they're going to be, you know, weird. But yeah, I definitely didn't really think it would be like this. I got to be honest. I really didn't think this one was going to really stay together. I thought what what what's surprising to me, I guess, this is what's surprising is the seeds themselves um, didn't all just fall out. Um, they're still in there for the most part. Um, a couple of them kind of did, but I don't know. I mean, it okay. Turned out pretty darn good, I think. So yeah, hopefully we'll enjoy the trip. It should be pretty fun. We're looking forward to it. Um, we really like Disneyland in the winter time when they do the, the whole you know Christmas parade and it's like snowing and all that stuff. I just, the problem I have though is I really don't like going on vacation in November. It makes things a little bit difficult. This is a busy, busy time usually. So, um, and actually I gotta get 
lots of stuff done the rest of the day trying to get get ready before the trip but i hope you guys enjoyed watching this come together this was really cool um i'm really happy that it turned well and man i i'll tell you what though i love the the even without the pumpkin seeds i think that these colors in a blank would be pretty sick so maybe be looking down the down down the path a little bit i might be adding one of these uh to my lineup of pen blanks um, so is there anything else to, to share? Is there anything other other goodies going on here? Hold on a minute guys. Let me think for two seconds before I forget anything uh, that they, oh the ornament challenge um, ornament challenge is on uh, Make sure to get your ornaments going um, And if you didn't see the the ornament video um, I made a couple of them um, and I merged 3D printing with resin on those ones and made a couple different types of, um, type of, sorry, I'm looking at, <laughs> trying to pull up a, that video for you guys to, to drop a link for you. Um, I made a couple different uh, designs on mine and I really, really enjoyed them, uh, you know, like turning them and everything turned out pretty good. So. If you don't know about the ornament challenge, Turner's Warehouse is putting it on and you basically make an ornament, um, send it down to Turner's Warehouse and you can enter into different categories. There's prizes available, but the big, the cool part about this is you send them down, they auction off the, the, the ornaments and then the proceeds from that, 100% of the proceeds goes to Toys for Tots this year. So um, pretty cool. You're not gonna, just, just to make sure, we always wanna make sure that you guys understand you're not getting the ornament back. It's like donating it. Uh, and then somebody buys it through the auction and they, they get it. But um, you have a chance to win prizes. There's, you know, like first place in all the categories gets prizes. Plus they just do drawings. Um, and there's tons of prizes this year. I just put together and I'll be uh, packaging up my ornaments and uh, my prize, one of my prizes is a box of blanks. I don't even know what this would be valued at. It's well over $200. Um, so this is going to be one of my, oh, I can't even get on the camera. This is one of my prizes. I'm just kind of putting things together here. Lots of different pen blanks and stopper blanks and handles and all that kind of good stuff that I've been kind of collecting. Most of these, you know, we made on the, the live streams. Like these guys, these are all fun ones we made. Colored pencil blank, all kinds of good stuff. So anyway, this is just, this is one of my uh, prizes that I'm donating to the, to the cause. The other one's a $200 gift card to my website. So, you know, if you guys need pen blanks, of course, you know, check out resinworkstudio.com. I got all kinds of different stuff. Plus honeycomb, al aluminum honeycomb, um, the glitters, the starlight glitters, all of that stuff is available on my website. So there's links down in the description below if you're interested in any of that. And then head over to Turner's Warehouse. I don't know if I have a link. Let me go grab a link to that um, to find out more information about the ornament challenge. Um, there's a few rules and things um, and there's like an entry form thing uh, if you follow this link so we got all kinds of things going on guys so anyway thank you guys all for joining the fun today i hope you have a great rest of the weekend and i will see you guys on the next stream like i said not next week but the wednesday after uh, we'll be back in action doing some resin casting so have a good night guys and i'll see you on the next stream